All right, everyone, welcome back to our work on the project and to our third checkpoint, MP2. So what are we going to do in this checkpoint? Um, in this walkthrough, what we're going to do is just get the test suites set up so they compile, which requires, like we did for MP1, stubbing out a few things. And we'll do that together. Um, but overall, let me give you a sense of what we're doing on this checkpoint. So we're going to add a new feature to our app. Right now, you can view the favorite places that were contributed by uh, CS124 staff and some faculty in the department, and those are loaded from that CSV file that we provided you along with the MP starter code. Where we're going, though, is to allow the user of the app to also mark their favorite place on the map. This is going to introduce us to a couple of new ideas in terms of how our app works and certain features of the HTTP protocol, which are really commonly used and things like that. Um, so this is going to be really fun. Um, now, when you get the MB2 test suites, I've done the standard thing. I've taken them and I've, I've moved them into the right spot. And if you need help with that, please review the previous walkthroughs. So I've got my MP2 test suite and I've loaded it up. And you can see that uh, as there were previously, there's a few places where I need to add, um, add some code. And these are places where we're going to just stub things out for now so that we can get our uh, code to compile. Um, and then we'll come back and work on this uh, later. Uh, so it looks like the client has this new method called post favorite place that takes, um, and, and we'll go look at that in a second, and that takes uh, a place and then it takes a callback that returns a, a Boolean. So we'll, we'll, uh, you'll see that uh, this is a result might throw that contains a Boolean. And this is because this is different than our previous method on the client where we were retrieving data. This method is actually sending data to the server. Um, and then down here in this other test case, you'll see that there's actually a new activity that's part of our application, which is pretty neat. Um, so we're going to uh, do these two things. Let's start by uh, making the changes. To, and again, I can just sort of hit F2 to, to find the things that are wrong here. So let's start by doing this. So essentially, and I'm wondering if this will even uh, work. I could try this. Let's see what happens. Um, okay. Uh, and, and this is wrong. The second argument to this is wrong. Uh, all right, never mind. These methods are, they always seem like they're going to be super helpful, but it's not kind of, it's not really where I want it to be. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the code that, that we're used to working with. Um, and you'll see that there's a method called get places. And this one takes uh, what's called a consumer, which is a callback. So that allows me to accept something that I can then notify when the result completes. Um, and so this is going to be similar. So this method is called post favorite place. I'll take the method signature for get places as a starting point. I need to make a few changes to it. So, um, so this one's going to be called uh, post favorite place. Um, and if, as a first argument, it takes a place because this method, which we're going to work on later, is going to be used to send data from the client to the server. So when the user marks on the map their favorite place, we need to actually communicate that data to the server. And that's what this method is going to be used for. Um, so it's going to take a place as the first argument. That's the object that we're using to store information about a place on the map. We're going to send that to the server using this method. And we'll work on this um, later. Uh, now, as, as, as a result, so when we did our get places method, we, we had this result might throw wrapping a list of places because the list of places is what this method is expecting to get from the server. It's going to take the server response, deserialize it um, into a list of places. In this case, because we're sending data to the server, the result is really just a Boolean that indicates whether or not that worked or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace a uh, list place with a uh, Boolean. Um, my result might throw can wrap any type of, I think I'm missing a brace there, there we go, uh, or an angle bracket. Uh, this can wrap any type of uh, Java type. I'm using capital Boolean uh, for the reasons we've talked about previously having to do with boxing. As a little case, Boolean is a primitive type. Um, and for now, I'll just uh, throw new illegal, uh, or is there actually like a unimplemented? Um, no, I think there's something called not implemented exception. Check that out. So I can just throw this here. Um, and what that'll mean is just like, I haven't done this yet. Uh, and I'll put a little to do comment here. Um, MP2. All right. So if I go back to here, I should see that that is working. Okay, great. Um, that, that was fairly straightforward. Now, the other thing I need to do is I'm actually going to create a new screen in my activity. What's going to, in my app. 
What's going to work when we're how this is going to work when we're done is the user is going to click on the map. That's going to launch a new activity that's allow them to fill in the details about that place that they are adding to our sort of database, right? And then we'll communicate that to the server, and that place will show up on the map. Pretty neat. Um, so we're actually going to have a new activity, a new screen in the app. Um, I need to place that in the right spot. So I'm going to add that over here. I'm going to hit new Java class. I need to make sure I name this correctly. So this is called uh, add place activity. And I get this dialogue again about whether or not I want to add this to get. I do want to add this to get. That's important. So I'll hit add. And now what I need to do in order for this to, to act as an Android activity is I need to extend uh, the same class that the... Um, the main activity does. Uh, so I'm going to go here over here and I'm just going to grab this uh, and I can just go up here and I can hit extends uh, app pat activity. Uh, that's correct. Uh, let me make sure that import is the right one because there's a few options. Okay, that's androidx.appcompat.app. Perfect. Okay, good. So now if I go over here, you'll see that all of the errors are gone. And I should be able to run the MP2 test suites. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll make a new run configuration the same way we did for MP1. So I'll go up here, I'll hit edit configurations. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to rename it to test MP2. And I'm going to have the test it runs be this MP2 test that I just added. Now let's go ahead and run this. I don't expect anything to work right now because I haven't done any work on MP2. Unlike the other parts of the MP, Sometimes we gave you tests that pass. In this case, we did not. So none of these are going to pass. Some of them are crashing. Some of them are failing. But that's what we expect. But the app is compiling, and I'm able to run the test suites. Okay, so at this point, once we've moved the test suites into position, actually, once you move the test suites into position, you should really commit right away. But I didn't. So at this point, I would open up my commit dialog, and I would put in a, a new commit. Um, I would make sure that I add the MP2 test suite if Android Studio didn't ask about that already. I moved it into the project in a little bit of a different way than you're probably going to. So I'm going to make sure that this gets added. I'm also going to add all the changes. Um, and I'll set adding MP2 test suite and sub out missing methods and classes. That gets a good and activity. That's a good command message. Okay. Um, cool. So. I'm off and running on MP2. That's how to get started. Um, next, what we'll do is we'll talk about the first test case and a little bit about what's going on that's going to introduce us to some new ideas in networking and lead us into uh, server.java where we'll need to make some changes.